When I campaigned for a Remain vote, I was stunned by the irrational hostility I met. And when I dared to voice my concerns over the outcome of the referendum, my postbag, both virtual and real, it is astonishing people will actually put stamps on these diatribes. It was awful. But whatever the way the public voted in the referendum, I believe it's not only right, but the responsibility of those who believe that leaving Europe would be bad for the country to say so and not be intimidated by the bullies. Once the terms of our withdrawal from the EU are clear, the public should be given the final say on whether or not to accept them. I can't understand why even the most devoted Brexiteer wouldn't wish to give the public the final say on the terms on such a momentous decision unless they feared that the terms might not be acceptable. It sometimes seems that the only mandate in which the government has an interest is that granted by the Daily Mail. Well, it's a great sadness to me that in August my tenure at the British Museum came to an end. You were only allowed eight years. But my concerns for that institution and others like it remain very, very deep. The British Museum employs people from all around the world. It's a museum of the world for the world. But after the Brexit vote, they encountered racism on the floor of the museum for the first time. And I've spoken to people from all over the world who are working there now, and they feel less comfortable in this country than they did. And they're seriously considering whether they really want to be here, whether or not we're kind enough to allow them to stay. We don't need scare stories about what the future will hold. It's happening now. People can see in the shops that their prices are rising. They can see that doctors and nurses are leaving the NHS. The nirvana that was promised is already going. Far from taking back control, we're losing it. That's why I believe we need a people's vote. My Lords, here I have to declare an interest. I'm a director of the People's Vote Media Hub, and I'm not going to stop trying to campaign for what I believe will be right. It seems to me only right and only democratic that we should put it to the people that this is what's on offer. Is it really what they want? Brexit is not Brexit. It's an embarrassing shambles. And whether it's this deal or no deal, it's not in the interests of this country. The only democratic way to determine what happens next is to give the people a vote, whether they want to proceed with this nonsense or stop it. I've always been proud to be British, but that's becoming harder. This country is looking increasingly ludicrous. We're in a mess. It's fair to say that thanks to David Cameron, Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg, we're in a veritable Eton mess. <laughs> the public deserves the opportunity to save the country from that mess. My Lords, a referendum is their right. The Government has made it very clear that its version of taking back control is to do its best to shut out Parliament as far as possible, and we only need to look at the illegal attempt to prorogue Parliament to see that in action. Brexit is an unnecessary onslaught on top of COVID. We were promised that Brexit would free the UK from EU red tape. Having seen the troubles of our fishing industry, the New York Times describes that promise as a macabre joke. The chief executive of the Scottish Seafood Association describes the situation now as red tape gone crazy. The noble lord, the minister, acknowledges that there will be continuing requirements for paperwork. So could he tell the House how he equates the former promises with the current reality? The bot that churned out online propaganda ahead of the referendum amounted to interference in our electoral process on an industrial scale. We cannot say categorically 
whether or not they affected the result. But we do know that they tried. And yet, my Lord, the Government has neither investigated what happened nor done anything that we can see to prevent such online terrorism. The noble Lord Lord Frost, who negotiated the protocol, has made it clear that it was an imperfect protocol and it was agreed because it was the only way to get Brexit done. It was always clear that there had to be a border between the UK and Ireland, Northern Ireland, if the protocol went ahead. So would the noble Lord the Minister agree that Parliament, this House and the people were misled and that's why we're in the mess we're in now? I'm proud to be a member of this House and the vital work it does in our constitution. And I am devastated by what this government is doing to trash the reputation of this parliament. Only today, in the, the Times, the former Solicitor General, Conservative Solicitor General, the noble Lord Lord Garnier, writes that the proposed Bill of Rights will further bolster the concerns of those who believe with some justification that this government has a reckless disregard for domestic and international law. And my lords, that is the verdict of a former Conservative Solicitor General. One in four small businesses have stopped exporting altogether because of Brexit. But this isn't just a story about trade figures. This is about people, people who have really suffered, who have seen their businesses wrecked because of Brexit. How on earth can it be justified to go ahead and do away with protections and rights bestowed by European law without actually having done some consultation as to what the results are likely to be? Why would the government, who is so keen on bringing back control to the UK, not wish to give Parliament a say on whether EU retained rights and protections should remain. Why should consumers not have the protection of a vote in Parliament? Perhaps the noble Lord the Minister could tell us why he doesn't want to know what the advantages and disadvantages of legislating would be and doesn't want consumers to have their rights taken into account.